Hello and welcome to Ivory Blush Roses. My name is Lisa and I am so glad you're here with me today. Today I'm organizing a bunch of loose ribbons and trims that have accumulated in a tangled mess. I thought I'd show you how I like to organize them so I can easily see what I have and find what I need when I'm working on a project. I use a shoebox system to keep things organized. Inside I wrap the lace on cards that I've cut to fit. It makes it so much easier to see what there is when you have it all nicely organized rather than in a jumbled pile. To make the cards, I got out a cutting mat and used a rotary cutter fitted with a nicked blade that was no longer good for cutting fabric, but was still pretty sharp. At first I tried using a quilting ruler, but it slid around on the mat board, so instead I used a metal ruler with a cork back, which helped prevent slipping. I measured the interior of my boxes, subtracting a scant 1 16th of an inch from the width and about a quarter of an inch from the height. My cards are 7 and a quarter inches wide by 4 inches high. I've acquired my white shoe boxes over the years, so the dimensions vary slightly. I did find that the older boxes were a little taller than the new ones, so I probably should have cut these cards at 3 and 3 quarter inches high instead of 4 inches. I did do this for a few of the cards of really bulky trims. I want them to fit snugly in the boxes as it helps the wound cards stand upright and keeps them from wobbling from side to side. For the cards I used acid free mat board from the craft store. First I cut a long strip of mat board to the desired width and then I cut that strip into pieces the required height. Rather than marking the measurements in pencil for each cut, I just used the grid on the cutting mat to guide me. Once the cards are all cut, the rotary blade had gotten pretty dull, so I did discard it in a safe manner. Then it was time to gather all the trims that needed organized. What a pile! Got all these odd bits of ribbon, so let's do those. Oh, this is a beautiful satin, and it feels wonderful. I tried to keep similar trims together, such as putting all brocade ribbons together, or putting ribbons in color order on the cards. For smaller amounts, I wrap each round directly on top of the last. I use fine pins to secure the ribbons and trims once they are wound on the card. I try to place all the pins with the points downward on the card and buried underneath the trim, making it safer when retrieving the cards from the box. I also prefer to have the end of the trim pointing downward on the card as well, so sometimes I need to reposition it slightly to make that happen. Let's work on these. So these are all rayon seam binding. Just going to separate out the colors to make it a little easier. Now the way I work, I like to go from dark to light. Maybe it's the painter in me, I don't know. I think I'd do a better job of keeping everything flat when I twist the card like this. There, okay, we're gonna call that one done. Some trims are harder to wrap on cards than others. This feathery fringe trim is one of those. I just wrap and don't worry too much about keeping it all facing one direction. If I have multiple lengths of the same trim, I simply overlap the edges and keep wrapping back and forth, but I don't put a pin in it until I reach the end. On these, I put the pin in sideways as it wouldn't keep the fibers secure when pointing downward. When there's more yardage to wrap, I'll overlap it and spread it out somewhat. So with these, if I wrap them so they overlap, they help hold each other in position, yet it gives me an idea of how much I have. Now I'm probably going to come back and do a second layer on this, and I'm just going to overlap going the other way. All of these things that are on spools, I'm going to leave on spools. That one's not actually on a spool. So those I think I'm going to leave. And I'm probably going to leave those and I may just punch a hole in that and thread it onto that ring. So they all stay together. So I think those, let's just put those in the box. So the question is, this I got in England, 
I think I'm going to keep it on the spool just because I really love the way the spool looks and I've got enough room in the back for that to go. So I have two cards left. Let's do these three and maybe that one if there's room. I might have to plan a crazy quilt piece around this trim. Those beautiful greens and pinks. And then that pinky beige and the gold, that could be really fun. This also is just spectacular. If I live long enough, I may do one that's black and gold. These are all those gold metal buttons and black jet buttons that I have. That could be a lot of fun. I've got quite a few other pieces of black and gold trim as well. Looks like I wrapped that one backwards. That is wide enough. I'm going to actually put two pins in it. All right. This is just going garish next to those. So this really thin ribbon, it never wants to hold in a single line. So I'm going to spread it, and double it. Let's finish this card. That worked out well. Okay, so there's that one. So our box is doing pretty well here. You can see it's mostly full here. I do have a few other little odds and ends to deal with. I forgot about this one. I'd actually rather rewrap this because this card stands up just a little too high. I have a project in the works and this would go really well in it. So I'm going to actually move that to that project. I need to go cut one more card to do this. And I actually have one somewhere, so let me see if I can find it. I cut a few more cards, so let's go ahead and get this finished. This is a silk and rayon. There's yards of it. It'll probably take a whole card by itself, but this it just doesn't fit in that box very well. Looks like we've got multiple pieces. I really like the vintage label, so I removed it and placed it on the card before adding the ribbon. With a long length like this, I overlapped the edges and wrapped it all the way across the card and back several times. It's pretty bulky. When I gather materials for a project, I like to keep them together in a Ziploc bag. Okay, so let's take a look at these things I wanted to add to this project. Let me show you the fabrics. I have this lovely assortment of red, green, and black fabrics. And I've gathered these pretty Bavarian trims. And when we were going through stuff, this has got pink in it though. I don't know if the pink's gonna work, but this one, might work. There was one more piece here. Well, I think that one works, but I think this one is too pink. So that one's not gonna work. So I need to put that back in that other box after all. I think I'm gonna add these to this. Let's see if we can make some space to tuck it in. Oh, it's not long enough. So that one's going to have to go separate. 
Let's try this one. That works. And then this one, I think I'm just going to sort of tuck it underneath some of these others so it's visible. Anyway, it's tucked in there so I can see it. And I also have this mess of ribbons for that project. I'd love to get that on some card and this will go with that as well. It's just so easier, much easier to see what you have to work with when you have it all nicely organized rather than just jumbled in a pile. And this is a bias cut ribbon, so I'm really taking care not to pull too tight because I could really change the shape of it. Let's do this one. All right, so there's that. So now I have that all together. Together there. Perfect. All right, so that's all together. Then I can put that back in its bag. And so there's my box so much easier to find my stuff in now. So ribbon and trim and even these cards that I think they were pre-purchased, you know, assortments, they're in here. Even though they're not at the top, I can still see them and I still have room for my spools and things at the back. And that works real well. So this box is ready to put away. So this one goes up here. Actually, this box is ever so slightly wider. So I'm going to put it in the middle. I think it'll fit better there. Now I got down a box of cream and white because we had this little bit of lace. Oh gosh, and that's in multiple pieces too. And there's room on a card in here for that. All right, I'm going to tuck that back in there, lid on, and there. And pardon my mess here, I've been organizing my whole room. The last pile is mostly short pieces that aren't long enough to wrap on the cards. So the only thing I have left to deal with is this one. Let's go ahead and add that to this one. All right, now we're done. I actually could probably reorganize this because I've got another green ribbon here. Another brocade ribbon. That would be better in here, I think. And we'll add this one back into this. All right. There you have it. There's also a few small chunks of lace and other interesting bits. I'm going to put these in my tub of cutter linens and lace. I've collected antique linens and lace for most of my adult life and have gathered a lot of damaged pieces over the years to cut and use in projects. It's fun to search through this tub and find little treasures that I can use. In addition to the shoebox system, I do keep some ribbons on 4 inch brass rings. I use this for the ribbons that I use most frequently and want to have easy access to. Let me show you how I add ribbons to those rings. 
I want the length to be no more than about 18 inches. If I have a length, I usually start by doubling it, and that's too long, so I'm gonna double it again. And to put it on the hoop, I simply put that folded end through the ring, and then I bring the other ends through. And then I just loosely tighten it, and there it is on the ring. And this one, this is, looks like a shorter length, so it's probably about a yard long. And I do the same thing, just open that loop up, thread it through. But it just makes it really easy to hang on that keeps them organized. They don't get tangled and I can easily see what I have and I can lay it out on a project. And then these hooks just hang up very nicely on my hook on the wall. So there you have my ribbon and trim storage. All my white boxes, all labeled. So my white and cream lace is here. I've got rickrack, wired ribbon, vintage trim, colored lace, my floral trims and gimp, and some fiber trims. And then my corner where I have my hoops and stuff. So that's how I organize my stitches and trims. I hope you've enjoyed following along and seeing that. I love how neat it looks and how easy it is to see what I have now. And I have to admit that sometimes I think I find the organizing as enjoyable as the stitching. Thanks so much for spending your time with me today. I hope you enjoyed this and found some information that might be of help to you. Happy stitching and I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.